Well, thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very pleased to be here. As many of you know, I'm a great lover and believer in stories. And I thought that in the eight minutes that I have, I will use uh, three stories, draw eight short lessons, uh, and bring uh, three brief conclusions regarding challenges of management education. <clears throat> stories, as many know, are a currency for sharing knowledge. And it is one that uh, professionals, scholars, administrators, policy makers share, especially when we meet each other informally in the fringes of meetings like this one. So story, story number one is uh, a father, three sons, and a buried treasure. A father sees that he's approaching the end of his life. He asks to see his three sons and tells them that he has buried the treasure in the field. After he's died, they're to go out, dig the field, find the treasure, and the treasure will see them well to the end of their days. The old man dies, and the sons go out and dig the field, but they find no treasure. They dig and they dig, and there is no treasure to be found. Did the old man deceive them? They're disappointed, but what they discover is that when harvest time comes, the field produces two, three, four times more than it had in the past. So well they had dug it. Hard work. Hard work is a very important principle in management education in every university. But hard work alone is not enough. Active learning, no spoon feeding. Very often we in education are tempted to provide ready-made answers soft solutions to our students. I'm a great believer in hard work and letting students find their own answers to the questions that preoccupy. <clears throat> Finally, mistrust easy solutions. We are often looking for treasure, believing that there is a magic wand that will solve our problems when the solutions come in much more elaborate ways requiring different approaches to look at them. Story number two a woodcutter and a passerby. A woodcutter is trying to saw down a big tree, but his saw is uh, blunt. He's working hard, he's sweating, but the tree is not coming down. An old woman is passing by. Young man, she says, here is a file. Why don't you file your uh, saw and it will bring down the tree a lot more quickly? <clears throat> Young man looks dismissively at the woman Old woman, don't you see how hard I'm working? I'm far too busy to sit and listen to you. And he keeps sewing merrily along. Hard work, relentless action, is not enough. Management education calls for reflection, calls for times when we step back and reflect on what we're doing, the purpose of what we're doing, and the effectiveness of what we're doing. Failure to listen. How often we find that somebody has given us the clue to a brilliant idea or an effective solution and we fail to grasp it. And maybe somebody else listened to it, implemented it ahead of us. Failure to listen and the encouragement to listen I see as a, as a crucial uh, challenge for, for management education. Information overload. We live in times where we're overwhelmed with statistics, with data, with information of every sort at our fingertips. And sometimes it's hard to find meaning in the data that we handle. A short story packs a lot more meaning sometimes than large amounts of data. Story number three, a guru and her pupil. A young man arrives for his first meeting, a meeting with a guru, a wise woman. The wise woman unexpectedly greets him with a stick like this. Young man, she says, if you tell me that this is a stick, I'll beat you with it. If you tell me that this is not a stick, I will beat you with it. The young man stands back, shocked. That's not a greeting that he had expected. End of story. Has the story let us down? Is there something missing? Mistrust by polarities, either you or. 
the guru is trying to impress on her pupil that he doesn't have to say this is a stick or this is not a stick. He can say anything he pleases or he can stay silent, forcing him to realize that forced bi bipolarities very often conceal other possibilities. So forced choices are to be avoided. And maybe in this spirit of avoiding forced choices, my three concluding lessons as far as challenges, the need to balance scientific knowledge, and we're all believers in scientific knowledge, with practical wisdom that cannot be codified in simple rules, laws, and formulas, does not come in the form of immutable laws, but comes in the form of rules of thumb that can be applied more or less well. They need to balance reflection with intensive action. And in management, intensive action very often takes over reflection. So reflection, the ability to step back and reflect on what we are doing in a critical and methodical way is essential. Finally, the need to balance an ethic of care, a care for learning, a care for our students, caring for the communities in which we all live, caring for the environment, but also with ruthless and sometimes pitiless uh, criticism, critiquing of ideas, critiquing of established and accepted theories, uh, critiquing what is taken for granted. So these then are the lessons that I want to draw from the three short, short stories that I mentioned. Uh, I'm uh, now uh, very glad to introduce uh, our next speaker, who is one of our uh, students on the DBA program, and we're very proud to have him here. He's Mukova Masuta, who has been president of the South African Student Union, and who is also the CEO of uh, an organization which uh, uh, is uh, dedicated to enhancing the prospects of rural youths who undertake uh, uh, university education, often against formidable odds, and ensuring that these students accomplish their aims and become useful citizens in their society. Thank you.